everyone and welcome back to The Hard Way. Today we are going to talk about air brakes. So I have a problem on the bus, we are losing air pressure faster than we should, and today I'm going to show you how to identify the problem, and how to fix the problem, and how to test at the end to make sure you actually have your air system up to DOT standards and it should keep you safe on the road. So if you have a full-size bus or semi-truck, chances are it has air brakes. Uh, air brakes are a very effective braking mechanism and they're very um, uh, modular so you can hook up trailers and hook up different braking systems together and they work very well for that. They only work well when you can maintain air pressure. If you don't have air pressure you don't have brakes so the air brake system is key to safely driving down the road in these vehicles. Different jurisdictions might have different rules but there's a general guidelines you can follow when it comes to air brakes when you test them to see if they are performing, if they meet the minimum standards I guess. So I will go over a quick air brake test before I have the problem fixed and I'll show you how we're losing air pressure. And the problem with losing air pressure while you're driving, yes your, your actual compressor can normally keep up with it, but if you get into certain situations you can actually, if you're braking but like, or if you're in stop and go traffic or something like that, your compressor, because you're just idling, won't be able to keep up and you'll actually have your brakes set going down the road, which is never a good thing. It's also not giving you the most effective braking performance if you don't have good air pressure. And you're using your, your compressor more than you should, and that pre prematurely wears out your compressor. So right now I'm going to go over a DOT air brake test before I have our problem fixed and show you kind of how it works. So here we are at the front of the bus. We are going to do a DOT air brake test right now. The first step is to get it all the way up till your air dryer purges and that means you're up to pressure. Then you're going to shut your bus off and you're going to already have the wheels chalked but then you're going to turn your bus on, take out your parking brake, yeah make sure you have your air your um, wheels chalked. So it should go down and then it should stay and you shouldn't lose more than a PSI per minute and I know I have an air leak so it's not going to work like that and ideally these gauges should be together. Those are the two different braking systems in your bus. But I can already see that I've failed that test so next part of the test is to step on the brakes, fully depress them and hold it and you shouldn't lose more than four psi per minute while this is going on. So it looks like mine is holding pretty steady. If you have a problem a lot of times you'll hear air just whooshing out because you don't have the engine on at the moment so you can hear the leak. So that's pretty much a DOT air brake test. The next step is to re repeatedly pump the brakes and you want your warning light to come on, around 60 PSI. And then you want your parking brake tractor protection valve right here to pop off at around 40. Or so. I think it's like between 40 and 20 actually. So let's see if it pops out. There you go, it popped out. It's just a little bit low. I think it hit averages out the tanks or at least does picks the highest tank so it popped off right at 20 so that's the DOT air brake test so now that I've shown that I have an air leak somewhere generally what you have to do is shut the bus off or shut your vehicle off and then make sure it's in a quiet spot and you're gonna listen for air leaks if it's big enough hopefully and you'll be able to hear the general direction and then you grab a bottle of soapy water 
in a, like a spray bottle. And you're going to spray it on all sorts of air fittings and components, and you're trying to find what it's leaking out of. Um, generally, it's the compression fittings where the two pipes are connected together, so, or the pipe is connected into a brass um, pipe fitting. And those are pretty easy to spray down. You can actually see the bubbles coming out, and all you normally have to do is if it's a compression style fitting, you have to just tighten it up. But if it's one of the plug-in together ones, you might have to replace that fitting because they they just go bad, especially if you go from cold weather to warm. Back again, I developed an air leak because it got cold during the winter and one of those fittings failed. So um, yeah, you're going to spray things down. Sometimes it's the actual components like your actual brake valves or um, relay valves, there's a whole bunch of different valve components. So if the air is coming out of one of those components, generally the rule of thumb is they're fairly cheap components, so you just unbolt and unhook all of the lines leading to it, making sure you know which lines go where, and then bring that to like a Napa or another truck parts store. It's pretty, you can pretty much find anything off the shelf for the air brake systems, it's pretty standard stuff. There's not a whole lot of suppliers of these components. The worst one that's probably, if it leaks, especially if you're pressing the brakes down and you hear, hear a leak, is that's on your brake chambers themselves. And those are the hardest part of the air brake system to replace. Um, I'll probably end up doing a whole video on replacing a brake chamber because it is quite involved. So hopefully it's not that, hopefully it's just an airline. So in this case, I know where it's already leaking because I've found it and I just haven't gotten time to work on it yet. So I'll go under there, spray it down and kind of show you. I didn't have great soapy water so it's not the, normally you get giant bubbles coming out of the system and it's actually easier to test if you air your system all the way up and then shut it off because then you'll get more pressure coming out of the leak. So I'll take you to the video of me finding the leak and then we'll start pulling it apart and getting it ready for new fittings. So here we are underneath the bus and the driver station area and I'm spraying down the treadle valve, so the actual brake pedal valve. There's a fitting coming off there that's leaking at a T. Unfortunately it's not an easy one, um, but it's the only T on here and I don't have a replacement T style that has the quick connect fittings, so we'll have to replace it. This is the fitting that's leaking, we're first going to pull our air lines out of here. So that's that. It's a good practice to actually bleed your lines before you pull them out. Makes it a lot easier, but. This one has so much crud in it that I can't push it all the way in. There we go. Sometimes you have to push them in to actually get them to pull out correctly. So due to poor planning on International's part, there isn't much clearance between the fitting and the steering box support there. So it's really hard to get it past the, the actual support. You can go up into the cab and unbolt the actual treadle valve if you need to, but I decided just to force it a little bit. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. So that's the fitting that was leaking, was this one here, or one of these two. So, let's get this replaced. So this was the bad fitting. Um, once you get it out, you can either go to like a Napa or any like truck parts store, they'll have these compression style fittings. There's actually two types. There's like a push lock type compression fitting and there's a um, one you tighten down, it's like a ferrule style that you actually compress with a wrench afterwards. And I prefer these because they don't leak quite as often 
and they seem to be a better fix overall. So with the old fitting, it was 3 8 inch uh, pipe. So I went over to my little <laughs> supply chest of pipe fittings, found 3 8 pipe and then a T. And then I found 3 8 compression style fittings that will screw in one here and one here. So that will match what I had here. And then I went out and checked that this will actually clear better when I'm spinning in. So I'll assemble this here, but then I'll have to put these in after I've, well actually I can put this one into two. So I'll have to put this one in after I get the rest of it installed up underneath the bus. And then you have to kick your cat off of your toolbox. Move. Because you need to get your Teflon tape out of here. So this Teflon tape is probably not necessary with brass. These are stainless steel, so I'm going to definitely use um, pipe tape on both of these sides of this um, union. And then I need to actually, so I didn't realize that these are a quarter inch. So I'm actually going to use this quarter inch T that I have. So that these screw right in. And then I'll do this. This is the only clunky part of this plan. Now, like I said, it's nice to have options. And then a quarter inch close fitting. So this still has the same pipe threads for there, so we'll screw in. Yeah, same as that. So this will all screw in as one. And then the only thing I'll have to do once I get it installed is screw in this fitting. So, yeah. I love having just a small toolbox. So this folds up. Just a small toolbox with fittings in it. It has saved our bacon more than once. As we don't have to run into town or anything. I can, I'm doing this actually in a national forest parking lot. So yeah, we'll get this all put together and get it up back on the bus. So with pipe tape, you always want to go clockwise so that it tightens up your tape while it threads into your hole or into your fitting. And you always want to be wrapping so that you can just be putting constant pressure on it. Then I like to, it's a little risky because the threads are normally really sharp on these, but I like to just kind of push the tape in. That way it, um, kind of sticks by itself. We're just going to thread that in here. And this is where you'll cut yourself is when you're holding it like this and you're tightening. So I just go till it's just hard to hold on to so it doesn't slip because that's what will cut you. And then these air brake fittings that I have, they already have a pipe dope applied to them so you can just screw those in. And then Grab a crescent wrench because I like to hold that basically as my vise. And I have my Nipex pliers. I'm just going to tighten these fittings down. Now it's just brass, so you don't want to go crazy tight just till you feel it starting to, I don't know, resist. So this one will be a little different because we need to put our bushing on. Get it nice and started. And this is actually screwing both sides together nice and tight. So 
So I love these stainless steel fittings that you can get. I don't know, I haven't found them at Home Depot or Lowe's, but I know Menards, if you're up in the north central United States, they have a pretty decent supply. And yeah, I use them because they're cheaper than the brass and they're pretty, pretty nice overall. So this is the last fitting I need to get some tape on. And I always try to avoid as much as I can the starting threads. That way you can start the threads easier and then the tape will take over. It keeps you from cross threading things. So I'm just going to put this in here, just like that for now. Let's go get this installed. So I'm just hand threading it so I don't cross thread anything. Okay. Now we'll install our second fitting here. Now what you'll do is unscrew the other end of your compression fitting and there will be two parts to it. I'm not going to tip it out because I'm upside down backwards but there's a little um, brass fitting. Oh right there. You want that installed like so before you put it in. Then you're going to stick your pipe over, over there's a nipple right there. Stick your pipe over that, slide your ferrule up and your outer compression nut and you'll hand start that. And if this doesn't solve the leak, you can trim your hose back and retry. And you don't want to go too tight with these either, just till they're really snug. Because you're deforming that brass uh, collar and pinching your pipe tight. And they will kind of bottom out and it'll be much harder to tighten after that compresses. And this is the other part of the pipe, the other side, I'm trying to get all the junk off of that one also. And this is a great candidate to actually get cut back, just a hair. So it's been, it's really rough and not an easy thing for that ferrule to grab. So I'll be right back. So this is just a PEX pipe cutter, but it works pretty good for this. Just cutting off the affected area. Next step is to start it back up and check for leaks.
Okay, we have the air leak fixed. Now we're doing a leak down test. Starting at 100 for the red. And 106 for the blue. Starting now. Okay, we're coming up on a minute and we passed that test. Let's do the brake test. So now we shouldn't lose more than four PSI throughout a minute, starting now. So well, that was a minute and we, I would say we just passed barely. I have to look at, see what is what is leaking? I think it's probably one of the front brake chambers, but we'll take a look at that a different day. All I know now is it's safe to drive, so I'm going to reapply my brake and we're going to get ready to go, have a travel day. So, so now that we have a passing DOT brake test, woohoo, we are good to go. Um, it's something that as you go down the road, it could be 100 miles from now, it could be 1,000 miles from now, you'll probably have another leak. If your bus doesn't hold air like uh, for a few hours or overnight, there's probably a good chance that you have a leak somewhere. And if you're stepping on the brakes and holding them and you're losing air pressure, it's a good chance that you have another leak. So it's you're never ever done finding leaks on an air system, but once you get them all found, it is one of the nicer feelings because you can actually hold air overnight you don't have to air up the bus when you stop for gas and shut it off or something like that. So having a air brake system that is in proper working order is really important for safety and actually in liability too. If you get in an accident and you have terrible brakes or no brake pressure or problems like that, you're going to be looked at a little bit more closely than you otherwise would be. So in summary, the air brake system is very easy to work on. I would call it like a beginner skill level required to do this for mechanic skills. And the parts are fairly cheap. There really shouldn't be any reason why your air system isn't in working order. Um, basically, all you just need to remember is keep air pressure in the system and don't have any leaks. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.